Hello and welcome to my stats video where I go over everything that I read in 2020. There is a lot. I'm actually really interested in stats and I've been keeping up on these all year so I have all of the pretty charts and stuff so I'm very excited. I read a total of 34,810 pages across 102 books. All of these stats are basically the same for number versus percentage because I read 102 books so if I intermix them sometimes I'm sorry. We have ownership so these are the um, books that I got from the library versus ones that I have on my physical shelves. 70 from the library, 32 me. Uh, this number is a little bit skewed because my new practice going forward, or I started it in 2020, is that I get everything that I can from the library and then after the fact, if I really love it, I can purchase it. So that means that I only have books that I really love on my shelves, but it also means that like I have quite a few physical books that I've never actually read physically, but yeah, they still make me happy. For star rating, my highest is four stars. I have 38 four stars, followed by five five stars, and then I have 23 stars, 10 two stars, and two one stars. That's a really nice looking pie chart for a lot of really good books. I think the five stars might be a bit skewed because there's a lot of nonfiction that I'll just rate five stars because there's nothing else that it could have done that would have gotten it five stars. So like, eh, just throw them a bone. Next we have genre. My highest is thrillers at 22, which yeah, makes sense. Thrillers are just so easy and so fast and so good that I read 22 of them. Next up is romance. Again, that's just an easy quick read. Romances are really good for getting you out of a slump, even a small one. And then I have science fiction at 14 and then a bunch of other little ones. The The ones on here that are interesting are poetry at three. I tried to give poetry a chance this year. That's, that's enough of a chance. Some of these I had a hard time categorizing like there's fiction and contemporary on here. Sometimes I just kind of had to fudge things but at least you get the idea. We have author gender. I have 28 male and 74 female. If I have any books that are by more than one author or um, anyone who's non-binary or anything like that, they usually just go into the female category. I might try to expand that out in the future, but that's what we have right now. Next up we have format. So this is physical books versus ebooks versus audiobooks. And I always have like a surprisingly even split. 32 physical books, 36 Kindle books, and 34 audiobooks. I try to mix them up just for my own sanity. <laughs> That's what I like. Next up we have pages per month. I've started tracking my reading by pages rather than by books because it encourages me to read longer books. I also have split out this sometimes into not including audiobooks just for my own sake but I didn't feel like including that in here. So my worst month was January and my highest month was May. You can see when uh, the pandemic hit in March my reading actually went way up which I know didn't happen for a lot of people but I'm very thankful it did for me. Current books. This is one that I just thought was interesting. It started off as just me tracking how many 2020 releases I had but I expanded it out. Most, like a third of the books that I read were 2020 releases which I think is really impressive especially considering like I just use my library for everything. 39 books published in 2020, 24 in 2019, 10 from 2018, 8 from 2017, 4 from 2016, and then anything older than that. There are 17 of those. I don't know if that's impressive or just natural. I'm not intentionally trying to read newer or older titles. I just think it's interesting. Let's go over my Goodreads stats. The shortest book I read was Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. This is a poetry collection and it is very short. The longest book I read was Outlander, which I cannot believe I read this year. I think the reason it feels like it was so long ago is because I read it in March, right on the cusp of lockdown. So I read this both out and in lockdown, 
which is when time ceased to have meaning. So yeah, that 850 was a big boy. My average book length at 341, I think makes sense. I did look at my husband's um, summary though, and his count was 439, which is like 100 pages more than mine is, but I think he reads like exclusively giant tome. Most popular, Fahrenheit 451, no surprise there. Least popular, Agatha Audley and the Secret Key by Lena Jones. The interesting thing about this one is Lena Jones is a pen name for a company. So it's a whole writer's room, basically, that creates um, these middle grade stories, which I think is very interesting. My average rating of 3.9 is high, but I think I am very kind with my ratings. I, <clears throat> I rate everything and there's a lot of things that it just feels mean to not give something five stars, like a nonfiction book. There's nothing more it could have done differently to make me enjoy it more. So I just give it the five star rating. Um, my highest rated House in the Cerulean Sea at 4.52 is crazy high. Although sometimes when I'll come in here, it'll actually say Skyward by Brandon Sanderson because I think that they both have a 4.52, just so high. For some reason, Goodreads doesn't have a lowest rated. They only have the highest rated because I don't know more about positivity or whatever, but I looked for it. The lowest rated book that I read was Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz at 2.66. That is the lowest rating I think I have ever seen. I'm not saying it deserves it, but like the book reads like a first draft. It's just, it's a mess. After that, the next lowest rated book that I have is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. And then I'm gonna do a slow scroll through all of the books that I read this year, just to give you an idea. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> remember that one good times wow such books many things wow I actually have so many books I it goes to a show more books I showed the last three next I have a list of all of the books that I DNF'd I don't know if this is quite complete. I don't usually track them that well and I DNF very quickly. Like I think the the one that I got the farthest in on this list I got to 30%. Normally it's like 5% and I'm just not feeling it and I quit. Sometimes these books weren't even on my TBR. It would more be I had a lull in audiobook time and something came up at the library that was available right now so I just picked it up. I don't really want to go into any of these in depth because I didn't really read much of them and I didn't really give them a chance. So just for your awareness, uh, the books I DNF'd, The Only Child by Me A So, Platform 7 by Louise Doughty, To Have and to Hoax by Martha Waters, The Billionaire Murders by Kevin Donovan, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre, Emma by Jane Austen, and The Green Glass House by Kate Milford. Again, not saying I won't come back to any of these in the future. They just really weren't vibing with me at the time. In addition to the stats, there are a couple of books I just wanted to call out because they're not going to make it into my favorites or least favorites videos, whatever I end up doing. I haven't really decided but I figured I'd mention some of them here. I have an accolade for best adaptation, which I'm giving to Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. This is the inspiration for the uh, train wreck, abomination, crime against humanity. Uh, that was 2019's Cats. If you have not seen it, do yourself a favor, and I can't say and see it, do yourself a favor and think about watching it because it is an experience to say the least. The accolade for the best reverse adaptation is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This is a bachelor ripoff, essentially. The show in this book is called The Main Squeeze, but it is unashamedly just a bachelor ripoff. There were a couple of thrillers that I wanted to mention the accolade for the twist that I saw coming but was still shook by 
uh, is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. The award for the most number of subsequent twists, I guess is the good way to say it, is Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy. I actually had a sticky note on the cover with just like all of my hypotheses and questions that I needed answered in this book. I was obsessed while reading this. My favorite what the hell ending was Lock Every Door by Bradley Saker. That was a wild ending that I cannot stop thinking about and I highly recommend it. And then I wanted to have an accolade for most unique read or something like that. Really I just wanted an excuse to talk about House of Leaves by Mark said Daniel Lewski. This is one of the most unique reading experiences I have ever had. I do want to mention that this is kind of gross and misogynist and it's written by a white guy in the year 2000 so like what did you expect but it is truly a unique experience and if it appeals to you at all I would recommend picking it up. You need the physical book. She's a chunk. But like look at it. You need this book. You need this book. And then we have the book that made me cry the most, which is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. I don't really know why this made me cry so much. I don't think other people really cried in it. I think it was more just very relatable for me, I guess. This was one where like the last third of the book I was just crying the whole time. I of course, like everyone else, cried a lot in the Cerulean Sea as well, but those were more beautiful tears. These were the ugly ones. These were the ugly tears that you really want to get while reading. And that's it for this stats video. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you got a little bit of an insight into my reading going forward into 2021. I will have videos about my favorite, least favorite, some other kind of 2020 wrap up video coming shortly, but that is it for stats. So I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you later. Bye!